By the end of this video, you will know everything how to replace the lift pump on Hitachi excavator equipped with the Isuzu diesel 6BG1, how to clean and check fuel strainer banjo bolt screen, very very important if your excavator experiencing low power, that might be your case, and how to purge the fuel system. Yeah, pretty simple, pretty interesting. Let's get started. Today we are working on Hitachi EX225 excavator. Here's our reliable Isuzu six-cylinder diesel. Here's our fuel lift pump located on the right side of the engine. If you look from the back, that little guy, we have to remove it. Yeah, I will show you how to do it. It's not that difficult, but a few steps involved. All right, our rigid impact. We have to take a bunch of bolts around the cover plate. To get access to the side of the engine as you can see there's a few bolts around there are 17 mils take them off and we'll get the access here we go bolts are removed pull the shield out and as you can see there is a fuel injection pump and on the side of the pump our fuel lift pump that pump has a slight leak it still works but if machine will sit for a little while it will let some air get into the fuel system and then you have to prime and yeah not good right before removing the pump let's use a brake clean and clean all that residue all the debris all that grind whatever around the fittings we don't want to break the fittings loose when it's all dirty make sure none of the dirt will get inside the fuel system yeah just clean it up wash it with a brake clean of course best as you can guys if you have any questions comments critics suggestions put everything down in the comment section below as usual here you go and i'm going to blow all that loose washed soaked debris with a compressed air yeah always start clean make sure you're disassembling keep everything clean much as possible that's the best practice and uh, yeah, don't let everything get more dirty than it is. And I'm just going with my air wonk and just blowing all that dirt out. Okay, clean enough. Now I'm going to undo the bottom banjo bolt. As you can see, there is a bolt on the bottom. And we have to remove that guy to the lift pump. Yeah, and point it out. That's our bolt. There's the copper washer. And we have one more at the top at the fill filter we have to crack that and we have to crack that as well to get the lines loose and get removed yeah all right i'm going to do that first and uh, before doing that we have to undo the fuel high pressure fuel lines brackets make sure lines will come apart yeah 10 mil socket or wrench yeah no rush no hurry yeah one bracket is removed but we have a few more to undo let's do that there's another bracket down below 10 mil socket let's break that bolt loose we have to remove those brackets to be able to undo the lines those metal lines they need to come out some of them just have to get loose all right, this another bracket is re removed, as you can see. Yeah, now 17 mil to remove the bungee bolt from the filter. Wow, like that. Just break it loose and take a bolt out. Be careful. There's a two copper washers. If you have a replacement ones, replace it. If not, yeah, well, might as well. You have to reuse it. Make sure you won't lose any of those the bunch of bolt all right bolt is out let's just uh, pull the line ahead remove the washer make sure that washer won't fall down and get lost okay we have that now we can move to the neighboring fuel line up to the fuel filter as you can see this one is coming from the lift pump let's break that bungee bolt loose 
we have to remove that fitting to be able to undo that line from the lift pump yeah old school design pretty robust pretty reliable this is old diesel yeah this engine has a very basic simple injection system all right let's just uh, crack the upper bolt loose i'm holding the fitting with a wrench and breaking it loose with a socket yeah pretty tight honestly i even couldn't believe how hard it was to break the bolt loose okay now it's loose 17 mil deep socket i'm using with a couple extensions and uh, yeah 3 8 ratchet right as you can see bungee bolt came off be careful there is a couple copper washers one of them sitting on the pump on top of the fitting be careful not to drop that yeah one line is removed take the copper washer we might need it because if you don't have uh, new ones you reused old ones what you can do yeah let's uh, remove the fitting as well as you can see a little bit of dirt sitting behind what came loose there's a fresh fuel inside the pump i just um, turn that fitting out yeah a little bit of dirt around so let's just uh, wipe it whatever we couldn't get with a compressor and to remove that fitting from the lift pump it will get us a little bit extra room to get to the mounting bolts as you can see there is another washer and uh, yeah pull that fitting out we'll need it later yeah as you can see yeah you can just leave the rest inside that's totally fine no need to remove it yeah okay let's get to the bottom bottom one 17 mil wrench i'm extending my wrench with another wrench because that bungee bolt was very very tight yeah. i couldn't get it with a ratchet to get enough leverage but with the extension yeah everything's possible all right and as you can see here i can now go underneath and spin that bungee bolt with my pretty tight here we go nice and easy fast and it's out yeah here we go the bungee bolt is out and as you can see there's a plastic strainer screen very important on suzu hitachis some kubotas some japanese diesels with the zexel injection pumps Bosch pumps they use those insert fuel strainers fittings inside the bungee bolt at the fuel inlet side yeah even before the filter this is how you clean the bungee bolt fuel strainer screen on Isuzu diesel they know to get clogged up as you can see it's very dirty even if you change your filter but you still have the fuel starvation lack of power as a result this is because there's not enough fuel can pass that dirty screen and get to the injection pump yeah as you can see all kind of debris all that dirt and chuff yeah stuck in that little screen and that's how your fuel flow get blocked and when you're on high demand on power need more fuel then your machine will start sputtering bogging down and stalled out even under the heavy load yeah not good you have to check that bolt once in a while would say at least a once a year and get it cleaned up we're going to do it right now yeah because uh, yeah this is one of the most overlooked components on isuzu diesels okay here's the screen i'm just washing it with a brake clean make sure it's all clean and nothing inside stuck in the screens and be careful with the plastic mesh it's so easy to damage so easy to break and they were brittle especially when they're getting old and plastic dries up let's just blow the everything with the compressed air inside out 
make sure screen is good as new and the machine will have no restricted fuel flow to the injection pump and have a full power when we need yeah beautiful let's clean the bungee bolt as well all inside out make sure it's all clean let's just give a little spray of brake clean very helpful cleaner i like it works good helps to wash and clean parts yeah you know what i mean yeah and let's blow the whole brake clean with the compressed air make sure it's perfect all right let's insert our fuel strainer in screw it in let's just snag it tight it with a flat screwdriver or a little pry bar what i'm using there we go beautiful yeah if you have a new copper washer replace them if not you can just flip them upside down change it or reuse it they're just fine won't be any problems okay now 10 mil there's a 10 mil 10 mil nut to remove holding a fuel lift pump to the engine block on one side there's a two tiny nuts it's hard to get but break them loose and carefully remove them with a socket and this one is easier to get with a 10 mil wrench yeah just generic 10 mil nut if you lose it yeah there's so many you can find this replacement but it's a little bit tight for the fingers but it's doable it's possible it took me a while uh, one sixteen of the turn at the time as you can see it's pretty tight yeah guys if this video is informative helpful please put a thumbs up very appreciated that and uh, as usual likes are always always very welcome yeah okay as you can see there was uh, two 10 mil nuts i just removed and uh yeah pump can be pulled from the engine like that just wiggle it a little bit and it will come off the studs here we go nice all right and pump run from the engine camshaft lobe as you can see there's a roller yeah nice there's an original fuel pump there's a 1990 nine year model hitachi excavator yeah and it's original it still works it's still an okay to the degree just lets a little bit of air get in over time and uh, yeah well i have another one already arrived and uh, i'll put it in all right let's uh, see what we have okay here's our pump all right it's dirty it's oily a little bit yeah, worn out, but as you can see, a little bit of wear on the lobe, but nothing's major. Yeah, not too bad. As you can see, the roller looks pretty good. Yeah, this machine has lots of art. And here's unfortunately new one. I gave the dealership the machine identification number and then sent me, oh, this is what for your engine, but that one has a plunger. That's totally different because the same engine, but in Japan, they like to switch from one. <laughs> style pumps to another from year to year and unfortunately that part arrived I waited for two weeks almost to get the in part the and it's a wrong part and as you can see it's so everything the same on the housing but that's a plunger type and that's a roller type well it's not going to work fortunately I didn't know until I pulled the pump out as soon as I pulled the pump out i realized mine is different well what i'm going to do i'm going to put my original pump back because i cannot leave the machine sitting for a couple weeks in the woods not moving no machine needs to go back to work and move to another side and this is one of the problems on the pumps too when you screw the plunger cap down that little o-ring little s gasket usually let some air get in yeah we're going to replace that as you can see it's all totally dried up and lots of cracks and uh, i'm going to put a new o-ring to replace that old one and that will take care of partial of my problem so for the pump getting air in 
and uh, yeah meanwhile this old pump will get back to work unfortunately because as sometimes you know happens we got the wrong parts even you give a <laughs> part supplier everything they need vehicle make model gear identification number engine number VIN and yeah no we'll just uh, replace this o-ring clean the pump and put it all back together well what we can do just do whatever we can okay here's the o-ring I just removed as you can see it's all dried up it's all cracked and when I pull it just fall apart yeah I have a bunch of o-rings as a replacement yeah the similar idea here we go I already put one in beautiful it will seal it will do the job it's probably not a touch you used the original one but it's better as new new stands for never ever used worked yeah never ever worked yeah you know, nice all right so might as well well I would say this pump is good than nothing as you can see it still has some life I'm going to put another o-ring replaced make sure oil won't leak from the fuel pump mounting hole yeah let's put a fresh engine oil on a on a roller like that make sure everything lubricated around the housing and a new oil ring yeah well we at least have two new o-rings and we can service that plunger o-ring at the top now uh, when we'll screw that lift pump plunger in it won't leak yeah well it works i mean whatever at least machine will get back to work okay i'm going to put the new pump in i prepared everything i can as you can see here's a part number if you need it and here's a engine yeah <laughs> fortunately there's a different variations which is maybe for better good but not sure okay going to put this bad boy back and uh, yeah here, as you can see everything's installed nice and clean I have everything's hooked up and yeah check it out yeah nice feels good when everything's clean and assembled now I'm going to purge the air from the fuel system pretty simple I will just have to crack the one screw and pump it fuel up with a lift pump why it's called the lift pump because that pump lifts the fuel up to the filter and eventually goes to the injection pump yeah and calls a manual prime pump as well okay 17 mil wrench also I'm going to yeah crack one bolt will prime the fuel and and get it air purged out yeah you have to do it otherwise at some point the machine will start running very very rough due to this some air enter the injection pump and here we're just going to crack that upper bolt at the top of the fuel filter housing this one is going to the fuel injection pump and we'll start pumping because as you know the diesel not only uses a fuel diesel also lubricates the high pressure fuel injection pump we don't want to run out of diesel and let the pump pump the air which is not designed for it means no fuel it means no lubrication no lubrication leads to more wear and tear on the parts all right i'm placing the spill pad rag i'm going to pump there you go it feels light and now as you see the fuel coming out splashing no bubbles no air and wow, all good okay means no air in the line let's tie the bolt tight don't go too crazy when it's snagged like that good you don't want to strip it so it's to do those bungee bolts or brass okay now push the plunger all the way in and tied it up don't keep that plunger loose otherwise air will get in yeah, just tie it all the way righty tighty lefty loosey 
Yeah, pull like that all the way until it stops. There we go. And snag it. Yeah, all tight, good. All right, let's wipe the diesel fuel. <coughs> we all believe in diesel. Diesel fuel is very important for any industry. Okay, let's just crack one cylinder fuel injection line. I'm cracking cylinder number one because we still have a little bit of air left and get that air go out and that way engine will self-drive faster. Yeah, just uh, one turn, just enough to approach the whatever air is remaining inside the fuel system. All right, I'm going to crank your engine over, let it run, get air out from the system, tie that cracked injector number one and check for leaks. And uh, as you can see, engine is running, no leaks, everything's checked, checked, checked. Good. Well, I tell you, <laughs> this fuel pump will probably run for some time until we we'll get a new one. But so far so good, no leaks. Engine works and it has been a few months after I filmed this video. Yeah, no any issues. And of course, we want to replace with the new parts, but sometimes parts are not available or takes too long to get them, but eventually we'll put a new one. But now you know how to replace the lift pump, check the bungee bolt screen, and push the air from your fuel system. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, as usual, for your time watching this video very appreciated that yeah subscribe to the channel it doesn't take you long and if you have any comments questions critics suggestion as usual put everything down in the comment section below take care of your equipment and your equipment will take care of you see you soon Bye bye